Force breakouts are a nightmare to forex traders. So what is a force breakout? How do you spot it in the market so as to avoid it? And are there ways to trade against a false breakout? I'm Onjiro Gishangi from Forex Exploit Trading Academy. And today we learn about breakouts. Do we have different types of breakouts? How do you avoid the false ones? And how do you trade the good breakouts? I'll also be sharing my breakout trading strategy for advanced trading. Let's dive into it. To the members of the Forex Exploit Trading family, we appreciate your continued support. To help us grow, leave a comment on this video or any older video letting us know of your progress. To the new members, welcome to the Forex Expert Trading family. To grow with us, subscribe, click on the notification bell so that you're notified every time we have new content and leave a comment about this video and also future videos you'd like us to add to the channel. We learn and grow together. What is a breakout? A breakout is an impassive move out of an area, an area of consolidation or an area of a range. For example, if you are the accumulation phase in a cycle, that accumulation phase while the market was pushing down, then gets into that area of consolidation, it creates a support and resistance. So it will be pushing in that range, then suddenly it's going to break out of that range violently or in an impassive move. This break out of this range is what we call a breakout. Now, there are two types of breakouts. We have one breakout that we call the false breakout. And we also have another breakout that we can refer to as the good breakout. Now, let's talk about the false breakout. In the event that you're in this accumulation phase, the market may break to the top, not really violently or even violently, but instead of continuing upward, it still goes back into the range and continues the consolidation. Now, this break here is what we refer to as false it was manipulative it was not a real break if you're on the sell side so you'll be having an accumulation face again at the top side the market will be in that range then suddenly it's going to push down now if it's a real or a good break the market should continue to the downside but if it's a fake or a false break it will be broken to the bottom side then the market still goes back and continues to consolidate so this again here is what we refer to as a false break now false breaks are nightmares because it will give you hope that the market is pushing in your direction or we are done with the range but you know it's a lie the market is still in the consolidation phase. So how do you avoid the false breakout? One, by trading with the trend. Make sure that whatever breakout you're taking is in line with the trend. For example, if you're on a buying cycle, you should only take the breakouts that are pushing the market to the top side. Do not take any breakout that tries to push the market to the bottom side. Why? Because it's going to end up being a false break, while the one to the top side is going to be a good breakout. So if you're on the buying cycle, and this is very, very important, if you're on the buying cycle, make sure that the breakout that you're trading is in line with the cycle. Again, if you're on the selling cycle, where the market will be creating a series of lower lows, Make sure that the only breakouts you're taking are pushing the market to the bottom side. Don't take the breakout that is showing that the market is pushing to the top side because there are higher chances it's going to end up being a false breakout. Chart example, this is USDCHL for our chart. We have this build up with a momentum break to the top side with a very, very huge candlestick. This is maybe economic uh, event that happened here that we had this break now without paying attention to the trend you may think that this is a good break to the top side why because the candlestick has a lot of momentum or there's a lot of strength but 
Rule number one, minimize your chart and check where the market is coming from. Always pay attention to the left side of your chart. And if you do so, you can see that we just came from a peak high and the market has been pushing to the downside. And if it's pushing to the downside, it means that any break we're supposed to have should give us discount entries to continue the market down. Therefore, if you took this buy, you'd end up having a false break. So one way of avoiding one way of avoiding a false breakout is ensuring that you're trading with the trend. Always minimize your chart and check the left side to see if the trend is in line with your breakout. Way number two of avoiding a false breakout is by paying attention to the build up range or the build up now build up is the range or the consolidation that you get at the accumulation phase you want your build up to take longer you don't want it to be three days or one day or five days you want it to take the longer the consolidation the higher chances that that breakout will be a good breakout that doesn't mean if it takes a whole month then the first breakout you see that means it's going to be a good breakout no there are also other factors that we will discuss to show a good breakout but you want your consolidation phase to be as long as the market can hold chart example this is gbp housing you see this consolidation area here this took around 10 weeks and when it finally broke out it has been pushing downside giving very high yield so anytime you're talking about a build up or a range you want it to stretch for a few more weeks and if you have to do the candlestick count at least let it be more than 70 candlesticks if you may if you're using trading view there is an option to count the candlesticks but for me anything beyond eight weeks is a good one or it's a good range Way number three on how to avoid false breakout is by use of structure. Now, there's a video on market structure which is very, very important. Make sure that you pause this video and watch this video here. This is the backbone of trading. Make sure you master everything that is on this video. It's going to really give you a good kickstart when it comes to trading. Now, when we talk about structure, this is basically the impassive moves. For example, if you're on a buying market, there will be that series of higher highs. Now, these higher highs are what we refer to the structure. On the other side, you're also going to have higher lows. Now, when you're trading breakouts, you do not want them to be too far from the structure. For example, if you're on a buying cycle, which is a higher high, any breakout, you want to take it close enough to the previous structure. What I mean by that is you do not want to be taking your buy entry at this area. Why? Because it's common knowledge by now, if you've watched the market structure video, that after every impassive move, there is usually a break or the market will give what we call a reactive move so in the event that you take a breakout trade at this area while the market is prepping for a break then that means that you'll be having a false breakout and you'll be trading against the trend and that will be a losing trade so again if you're trading a breakout make sure that you're trading a breakout close enough to the previous structure not too far away from the structure why because after this move you'll be caught with the break and therefore that breakout is has 80 90 percent chances of being a false break if you're on the sell side of course you have a series of lower lows as the structure so here we having our lower lows any break that you want to take any breakout trade that you want to take make sure that you're trading close enough to the previous structure you do not want to be taking your sell trades on this area or taking a trade when there's a breakout in this area why because the higher chances that that breakout is false breakout why because the market is up to for a break it's 
giving a break after this impassive move so do not take this breakout here it's gonna turn out to be a false breakout also since we're pushing down only take the breakouts that are to the downside why because again you do not want to trade against your structure very very important a chart example this is usdchf we've already identified the trend to be to the bottom side therefore with every retracement we'll be looking to push lower now the structure of our structure of ascending cycle is a series of lower lows with this retracement back here you want to take your cell trade close enough to that structure giving you a very good push to the downside now you do not want to be taking your cell trade at this area after the impassive move has exhausted why because after this move we expected to have a series of reactive moves so in case you take your cell trade here you'll be caught up by this and you end up losing money so pay attention to the reactive moves you can either have a trend line in there or you can use candlestick patterns wait for the break and only join the market with the retest make sure that wherever you're getting into your trade should not be too far away from this structure remember this was the previous structure so if you're taking a sell trade it should be up here you know just close enough to the structure and so that you can enjoy this move down do not wait for the market to get to this area and that is when you're taking your sell trade why because this again will be a false one make sure that you're trading next to the structure and with this again with the exhaustion there will be another reactive move is this reactive move again pay attention to the structure or the break and retest of that trend line you get in here for another trade if you're using break and retest then you can join this trade don't wait for the market to run down then join the trade at this area okay so if you're trading in line with the structure make sure that you're taking your trades close enough to the previous structure you're not trading too far away from the structure if you do that then you end up being caught on the reactive moves the fourth way to avoid false breakout is by checking the candlestick patterns now every break let's say we have a range at the bottom and we expect the market or the market breaks to the top side this candlestick here is what has given us the break now be very patient wait for this candlestick to close and pay attention to the next candlestick that shows up after the one that has given you a break if the next candlestick is a momentum candlestick then that market is likely to go high or even if it retest after the second candlestick you can still join the market to the top side but in the event that the next candlestick that shows up so you have a green candlestick here in the event that the second candlestick that shows up is an inside bar or an inside candlestick or what we call harami then there are higher chances that this is a false break why because the second candlestick pattern that has formed the second candlestick has given a candlestick pattern that shows the market is about to get back in therefore do not chase the breakouts pay attention to the candlestick patterns and how easy is that just sit on your hands wait for the second candlestick to form even if it forms a momentum candlestick give the market time it's still going to come back to retest that break and you can join the market comfortably so pay attention to the candlestick patterns to ensure that you don't find yourself trapped in the wrong move a chart example you have this build up and a sudden move out of this range breaking this ceiling of the range with a very big buying candlestick but if you're patient enough to pay attention to the next candlesticks that show up then you'd see that these candlesticks are not momentum to the top side and they'll be telling you that this is a false break so by just paying attention to the second candlestick after the break you'd have saved yourself from taking this false breakout the same thing here we have now the top of that force break being retested or being 
stop hunted so you'd have this break with this green candlestick then you'd be very patient to pay attention to the next candlestick and you'd see that this is an engulfing candlestick now don't chase it just because you've seen that it's red don't chase it no remember after every move or after every break it's breaking off from this region you see the next candlestick retested it almost a hundred percent or at the same height therefore there was no need of chasing the market with this candlestick wait for it to close there'll be another discount entry showing up and then you can join the market at a very risk-free area so that's how you use the candlestick patterns to check if the breakout is real or the breakout is a false break now we've been discussing how to avoid the false breakouts by either trading with the trend making sure that your breakouts are in line with the trend or making sure that the consolidation or the range part has good build up it has taken a while or also trading with the structure and close enough to the structure and finally paying attention to the candlestick patterns after the breakout now not all breakouts are bad not all breakouts are false we also have good breakouts so how do we trade good breakouts if the breakout was to the top side so you'll be having the range and then the break to the do not chase the impassive move giving the breakout wait for the reactive move that will give you Arites. Now, on the candlestick pattern video, I've talked about the price action around this retest region. So pay attention to the price action around here or the candlestick patterns around here. And if you do not know how to do that, you're most welcome to watch the candlestick video and that will give you enough knowledge on that. So wait here to have a candlestick pattern that will help you join the move to the top side. Do not also forget if you're on the sell side, the break to the bottom side, no need to chase it. Wait for the move back. And also on how the market pushes back, this is very, very important. I've talked about this on the liquidity video. How the reactive moves push or how the retest move happens is the one that is also going to dictate if the retest is going to fail or if it's going to be a success so you can also watch that video for that number two is by use of flip zone for example if the market has been pushing up and up then this this area here acted as resistance on this area acted the support on this area now this retest back this retest back will give you a good opportunity to trade the market up. Remember, it only works as a flip zone if this move back is reactive. In the event that this move is not reactive, there are higher chances that it will be broken to the bottom side. So there's a video on how the moves should be done, the demand and supply video. So make sure that you watch that so that you can pay attention to this move. This is the move that dictates if the flip zone will hold or if there will be a break of this area. Now, trading the flip zones will give you a good way or a good chance of trading the bricks for example if this move was very violent to the downside it means that it was broken now you do it for that retest and join the market to the downside so it's all about this move from this area did it violate your flip zone if it did then wait for a reactive move back and take it if the reactive move was really slow did not uh, break your flip zone then you can take the trade to the top side. So you can watch about the rules on flip zone from the demand and supply video. Number three is by use of structure. I've already mentioned the use of structure on how to avoid false breakouts. So if you're on the buy side again, make sure that you're trading in line with that structure and you're also taking breakouts that are close enough to the structure and not far away from the structure that is very very important again on the sell side you want to take your trades close enough to the structure and not away and also you want to trade with the structure not against the structure if you take against the structure again you'll be trading the wrong direction 
Then there's the candlestick pattern. Of course, I've discussed this here. So you want to make sure that your candlestick, the second candlestick, is giving you momentum to that new direction and it's not giving you a reversal vibe if it does then you know that that is not a good breaker then again you want your range to take a while let it be eight or more weeks okay you want a range that is longer then you want to have the sma touch with the sma touch if the break is to the top side you want when the market is giving you a build up you want the market to interact with your 20 simple moving average and you're only going to pay attention to this range or this build when there is interaction to the bottom side of your build up with the sma until the sma touches your build up then that is not the right time to even pay attention to that breakout region or to pay attention to that build up so have your sms every time you have your range so that you know when it is time to pay attention on the sell side you expect the market to have a build up at the bottom area there you're going to set in your ma and only pay attention when there is interaction of the top of the build up with your simple moving average only when these touch only when they interact that you should pay attention to the build up because this interaction here is a good signal that something is about to happen if there is no interaction with the top side of your build up with the sma then the break is taking longer or it's gonna take longer so that's how to use the sma touch and of course the trend i already mentioned it here make sure that you're taking breakouts that are in line with the trend if you're on the sell side you do not want to take the break to the top if the break to the top happens then there are chances that it's gonna be a false break you only want to take that break to the bottom side that is how to trade with the trend so far i hope that all that is clear and that you're going to apply it in your trading so what is my favorite breakout trading strategy among all what you've discussed is there one that i fancy more and why the one that i like most is when we're talking about the high value price points now when we're talking about high value price point this will be yesterday's low yesterday's high there will be last week low there is also last week high there is last last month high last month lows these points are very important because they give us value or what we call high volume points now by using of these areas they give me good breakout trading opportunities for example if a yesterday's low is broken so there is a yesterday's low let's say there then it's broken to the bottom side and it has been broken by a momentum candlestick now i'm going to pay attention to these points here and if it meets then i can wait for the retest of that market and i'm gonna join that breakout comfortably the same thing if the top is broken to the top side so there's a break to the top side and the momentum the break was momentum i'm going to pay attention to this to make sure that it's not a false breakout so I'm not going to chase it. I'm not going to join it at this area at all. I'm going to wait for a reactive move. Remember, the move must be reactive. Reactive move back to retest. Then I'm going to join that break to the top side. Same thing. If I'm using last week high, same thing, same process. If I'm using last week low, I'm going to use the same process. So this is my favorite a breakout trading strategy where i use the high vol volume points or high value points to trade a breakout so a quick recap of everything that we've discussed in this session one we discussed what is a breakout this is that impassive move or violent move away from a consolidation or a range we have two types of breakouts where we have a false breakout and a good breakout a force being one that is manipulative while a good breakout is the one that gives you new direction number three we discussed how to avoid the false breakouts how do we do this we can do this by one trading with the trend 
only taking trades or breakouts that are in the same trend as the higher time frame buyers for example if you're on a buying market you're only going to take breakouts that are to the top side if you're on a selling cycle you're only going to take breakouts that are to the downside number two we can use the build up range we want our consolidation to take longer because the longer the consolidation the high chances that the breakout will be good if you have a short time consolidation then the higher chances that the first breakout will be false number three we have use of structure now on the buying cycle we have a series of higher highs while on a selling cycle we have a series of lower lows if you're on the buy you do not want to take your buy trades too far away from the structure you want to have your breaks as close enough to the structure and in line with the structure if you're on the sell side again you do not want to take your trades too far away from the structure and you want them to be in line with a series of lower lows number four we talked about candlestick patterns the breakout usually has momentum it's very very violent but we do not want to pay attention to that impassiveness we want to pay attention to the second candlestick that appears after the momentum breakout is it a candlestick that is showing continuation or is it a candlestick that is showing calmness are we going back into the range or are we continuing in the event that we are having momentum we will not chase that breaker we will keep off we will sit on our hands and wait for a retest the retest again should be reactive it should not be impassively down or impassively going back to the start of the breakout if it's impassive then again that was a false break and there are chances that we will have a losing trade so we want that reactive move back and if it reacts and gives us good price action then we can join the market to the direction that the breakout had given now that is what we discussed in terms of the false breakout when it gets to the good breakouts how do we trade them because breakouts give very good trade setups therefore we do not want to work in fear we do not want to work from a point of fear and avoid breakouts while there are also good trading opportunities so one way of trading good breakouts is by waiting for the retest after every break give time for the market to give you a retest the retest should also give you good price action at the point of entry which is your key point before you click that button number two you can also trade breakouts on flip zones these are very high volume or high probability trade setup if the breakout is on a flip zone then the market will pay really well and again you can use structure you can use candlestick patterns and build up range as explained on the false breakout number five you can use the sma touch this is where we're using the 20 simple moving average in the event that you feel that your range is about to explode we're about to get the breakout now add in your 20 sma and you only now get to set your limits or you get to get into those trades when the sma if you're on a buying cycle touches the bottom side of your build up and if you're on the sell side you want your sma to touch the top side of your build up if there is no interruption between the 20 sma and your build up then that is not the time to get into that trade do not forget that good breakouts are good if they are traded in line with the trend and for my favorite or for the bonus for this session for my favorite breakout trading strategy is if the trade or the breakout appears on a high value or high volume point which is basically last week low last week high previous day high previous day low or last month high last month low do not forget you can also have the swing highs the swing lows or the equal highs and the equal lows giving very good volume trades so that's all that we have on this session on false breakouts and also how to trade breakouts i hope that you're going to use this but test it on your charts and only apply what comes easy 
to you to learn more get a copy of any of my forex books from the forex exploits online academy page on facebook or in linkedin thank you so much for watching this video we truly appreciate your continued support subscribe hit the notification bell leave a comment if you like this video and share it with your trading community until the next time i wish you the very very best namaste